I had plans for this week, and those plans involved this Ryzen 7 7700 non-X. came from Hong Kong, so it took a while to arrive. Also, this G-Skill Trident Z5 Royal Neo rated at 8,000 mega transfers. That was also part of my plans for the week. Instead, AMD sent through a blog post. More accurately, this is a draft of the blog that was published late last night here in the UK. So for the past couple of days, I've been looking at processors. Yep, it's time for yet more AMD Zen 5. Let's take a brief look at AMD's blog post and we'll take the salient points away and then I'll explain what I've been doing with these various CPUs and also a couple of PCI Express Gen 5 SSDs. The new Zen 5 architecture has launched in high-end laptops earlier this summer and is now available in the desktop i.e. Ryzen 9000 processors. Community feedback is very important to us and we have two relevant updates for you. Number one in bold, why AMD generated gaming data differs from reviewers data. As you may imagine, this has prompted a good deal of response. In particular, the 9% average generational uplift in 1080p gaming versus Ryzen 7000, and then you see an average of 6% higher performance across more than 30 games when compared against the competition's best. There are a number of points here, but the real biggie for me is AMD picks a vast basket of games and you can take issue with a great many of those games. They're not particularly 2024 release games. In fact, some of them are quite a few years old. Now, whether that means they're good for CPU testing rather than games you're currently playing today, that's an open question. But that one sentence from AMD, that's led to an awful lot of conversation. Not all reviews are seeing these results. Well, this is very true. And this reflects the complexity of high performance PC testing. And then AMD says they tested Intel configurations using comparable DDR5 6000 memory. I did precisely that myself. I used this same G Skill DDR5 6000 X per memory for both AMD and Intel. And one or possibly two comments under one of my reviews did say, but Intel can run faster memory. This is perfectly true. The thing is, DDR5 6000 already technically is overclocking, both for Intel and AMD actually. So as far as I'm concerned, it's a level playing field and it does both sides a favor. But yes, I could have run faster memory on Intel and given Intel a leg up, but I didn't. If you're looking for a new chair, then you should definitely check out Boolies. I'm currently sat on their Ninja Pro gaming chair, which is one of three models from their gaming series alongside the Elite and the Master. So if you're looking for something new to stick in your setup that you can sit on and game and work, then I recommend definitely checking out boolies.co.uk. In addition, AMD says they use the Intel default settings baseline power profile, which can have a small impact on gaming performance. The question, of course, there is what is the power profile they used? How many watts were they feeding the processors? What clock speed did they run at? Without those numbers, we're working in the dark. On Kit Guru's reviews, I listed the clock speed and power for each processor, and you can come to your own conclusions as to whether that was right or not. AMD also tests with Windows Virtualization Based Security, or VBS, enabled. This is the default Windows behavior, and Microsoft recommends activating VBS to improve security. Now here, I differ from AMD, and I'm probably in the wrong. I disable VBS on my test platforms, and I should probably leave it on default and leave it enabled. The point of course is all the processes I test are tested the same way. So even if my data shifts by some percentage points, at least they should be internally consistent. They go on to say, the Zen 5 architecture incorporates a wider branch prediction capacity than prior Zen generations. Our automated test methodology was run in admin mode, which produced results that reflect branch prediction code optimizations that are not present in the version of Windows reviewers used to test Ryzen 9000 series processors. We've heard a certain amount about this admin mode, I don't do any such thing myself. 
and there's been some conversation about whether admin mode actually is disabling VBS. It's quite clear from AMD's blog here, they're saying it's two separate things. So I have disabled VBS, however, I do not use admin mode. In light of this, AMD says the Ryzen 9000 series delivers leadership performance across yada yada yada, loads of percentage improvements in different areas. When comparing to the competition using optimal settings, higher memory speed and extreme power delivery profile for the competition on Windows 11 version 24H2 for both, we we see a double digit lead for Ryzen 9000 series in productivity and creator applications. They go on to say, here is our recommendation for how to unlock the best performance. And then they talk about Windows 11 version 24H2, which is available through the Windows Insider program. This is quite true. And you will note that AMD says Zen 5 will see the biggest boost, but this Windows update will improve performance for Zen 4 and Zen 3 as well. We're collaborating with Microsoft to roll out this optional update to all Windows 11 users soon. Well, that begs the question, what about the Zen 5 laptops that we've recently seen, including the ASUS S16 that was reviewed by first Matt, and then Dominic looked at the graphics side of things. Will that see a boost from this version of Windows 11? It turns out it was running it already. The laptop tops that are out there already have this pre-release version of Windows. And this makes the point that people who are criticizing Zen 5 and then they point to Ryzen 9000 processors, Zen 5 is more than just Ryzen 9000 desktop processors. It's also laptop and also Epic. And in this instance, it turns out they've already got ahead of themselves with the laptops. That's what AMD has said. So what about that new version of Windows? For the test setup, I'm using the same MSI Meg X670E ACE motherboard that I used in my reviews of these processors, and also the same G-Skill Trident Z5 Neo DDR5 6000 memory that I've already mentioned. In order that I could switch between Windows 11 23H2 and 24H2, I labeled two SSDs and physically switch them out. So there's no possibility that I'm using the wrong version of Windows for a particular set of benchmark runs. Where I ran into some annoyance is that AMD is focusing on specific games, Far Cry 6, Cyberpunk 2077, Hitman 3, and Watch Dogs Legion. And I only used Cyberpunk 2077 in my reviews of these processors. Far Cry 6, Hitman 3, and Watch Dogs Legion used to be part of my test suite, and I ditched them because I considered them to be too elderly and therefore fit for retirement. And that makes you wonder what AMD is up to. The other thing is AMD is focusing on gaming on the Ryzen 9 9950X. And when I looked at the charts in my review of this processor, the one thing I did not think was, wouldn't it be good if that 16 core processor was better at gaming? Because while I'm interested in buying such a processor myself, as I mentioned previously, I use the Zen 3 16 core myself. Gaming for me is but a sideshow on that kind of processor. But that is where AMD is putting the emphasis. The other thing is that AMD mentions benchmarks in Cinebench 2024, Single Thread and Procyon Office, and they show very little change. I ran my standard tests on the 9950X using Windows 11 24H2, and I found no significant change. In other words, this is all about gaming on the 16 core processor, but we're not gonna stop at that. We're gonna look at some other processors as well. And we're starting with Far Cry 6 at 1080p, image quality set to ultra. Top of the chart, the Zen 4 Ryzen 7 7800X 3D. On the new version of Windows, 194 FPS on average. On the current version, 184, so 10 FPS difference. Then we step down to the Zen 5 Ryzen 7 9700X. On the new Windows, 177 on average. On the current version, 163. Below that, we have the Zen 5 16 core. Three scores here. The 183 FPS on average is with the new Windows without VBS. Enable VBS and the score drops to 174. In other words, the overhead for VBS is 9 FPS. And below that, we have the current version of Windows at 162 FPS. 
So if you take the step from 162 up to 183, the Zen 5 is improving by about 20 FPS with the new version of Windows. Below that we have the Zen 4 Ryzen 9 7 1050X and the difference between the current Windows and the new Windows, 11 FPS. It's a very similar story in Far Cry 6 1080p with the image quality set to high. The frame rates step up very slightly, but the order remains unchanged. And we can see a healthy increase for Windows 24H2 over 23H2. The big takeaway here for me, however, is that the Ryzen 7 7800X 3D clearly leads at the top of the chart. AMD also wants us to look at Cyberpunk 2077 at 1080p, but first let's look at Cyberpunk 2077 at 1440p. With the image quality set to Ultra, we can see almost no separation between the different processors, regardless of the version of Windows. At the top of the chart, we have the Zen 4 7950X 3D, that's followed by the new Zen 5 16 core on the new Windows, which is a couple of FPS on the 1% low ahead of the current version of Windows. Realistically, there is nothing to separate these processors. We can also see that in this particular test, enabling VBS makes almost no difference. However, moving on to Cyberpunk 2077 at 1080p, we can indeed see some separation. Top of the chart, it's the Ryzen 7 7800X 3D on the new version of Windows, a single FPS ahead of the current version of Windows. Behind that, we have the Zen 4 16 core 3D processor, but the separation is absolutely minuscule. A step down from there, we have the Zen 5 Ryzen 7 9700X, and here, the current version of Windows beats out the new version of Windows. It's not a large gap, but it is significant. A short head behind that, we have the Zen 5 16 core Ryzen 9 9950X. First the new Windows, then the current Windows, and trailing slightly behind the new Windows with VBS enabled. After that, we have the Zen 4 Ryzen 9 7950X, current Windows ahead of new Windows by a tiny amount, and bottom of the chart, it's the Zen 3 Ryzen 7 3D. And we finish with Total War Pharaoh, which has some extraordinary results that certainly raise a number of questions. We start at 1440p, image quality set on Ultra. Top of the chart, we have the Zen 4 Ryzen 7 3D. You can see that with the new Windows, the average 234 FPS, and with the current Windows, 167 FPS. Clearly, that is a vast difference, and it makes little sense. The idea you gain 50% on your frame rate by changing Windows hard to credit. We move down to the Zen 5 9950X where we see similar behaviour. The new Windows 226 on average, enable VBS it dips to 219, but on the current Windows 166 FPS. And further down, the Zen 4 Ryzen 9 7950X, the new Windows 214 FPS, the current Windows 167 FPS. Clearly these figures are either showing something quite bizarre, or I've utterly messed up in my testing on a great many occasions. After those figures, we have the Zen 4 Ryzen 9 7950X 3D on 168 FPS. Type behind that, we have the Zen 3 Ryzen 7 3D. At the bottom of the chart, I'm showing the Zen 5 Ryzen 7 9700X. The figure of 167 FPS with a 143 FPS 1% low on the current Windows clearly beats the Zen 3 Ryzen 7 3D. The reason I've put this processor right at the bottom is that when I switched to the new Windows, Total War Pharaoh refused to start. I ran this processor as the final test, so I had all the other game data before the game refused to start. When I switched back to Windows 23H2, the game was absolutely fine. Quite what the issue is with this game and Windows 24H2, I have no idea. Moving on to Total War Pharaoh at 1080p, still on Ultra preset, the figures settle down. Top of the chart, it's the Zen 4 Ryzen 7 7800X 3D. On new Windows, 263 FPS. On current Windows, 240. The Zen 4 Ryzen 9 7950X 3D leaps up the chart here. And then we have the Zen 5 Ryzen 9 9950X. New Windows beats out new Windows with VBS. That's a significant overhead for VBS of 17 FPS just behind that, and then we have the Zen 5 16 core on the current Windows. Below that we have the Zen 4 Ryzen 9 7950X with the current Windows ahead of Windows 24H2. Below that, once again, we have the Ryzen 7 9700X, and the score on the current Windows was absolutely fine. 
However, switching over to Windows 24 H2, the game refused to start. Bottom of the chart, we have the Zen 3 Ryzen 7 5800X 3D. And we have to ask ourselves, what have we learned from this experience? It's taken me a few days working with Windows 11 24H2 versus 23H2, and I've come to some tentative conclusions. It's quite clear this pre-release version of Windows is doing something, and it's clear it's doing something more on Zen 5 than on Zen 4. I didn't go back and test Zen 3 because of time, and also it seems to me it's slightly irrelevant. You'll also note I did not retest Intel processors on the new version of Windows. We have Arrow Lake or Core Ultra 200 coming very soon. We expect middle of October, and I have no doubt we'll be retesting all the Intel processors on the new version of Windows at that time. It's clear the Ryzen 9 9950X gets a boost in gaming from the new version of Windows. Question is, do we much care about that? Do we consider this to be a gaming processor? Personally, I do not. It's also clear the other processes in the family get a boost as well, and that is welcome, particularly the Ryzen 7. The Zen 4 3D processors I retested also got a boost. That was good to see, and that suggests to me that when Zen 5 3D comes along, that is going to be the pick of the bunch for gamers. But I said that in my original reviews, so in a sense we've learned nothing there. And we're left with a final question. Why on earth did AMD appear to rush out Granite Ridge Ryzen 9000 desktop processors before the correct version of Windows was ready? They clearly want this version of Windows associated with Zen 5. That's why they've installed it on Zen 5 laptops, a thing we've only just recently learned. But for DIY PC builders, you have to know to go and get that pre-release version of Windows. You have to wonder if there's something going on behind the scenes. Cynical Suspicious Leo wonders, has Microsoft held back Windows 11 24H2 for their good friends at Intel? Is this version of Windows being held back to help Intel with Arrow Lake and potentially to hinder Zen 5? Let us not forget, after all, the Zen 5 processors on the desktop were delayed for a couple of weeks and then the launch was split into two pairs, Ryzen 5, Ryzen 7 and then the two Ryzen 9s. And we're still not clear what was the cause of that delay. Clearly AMD has had a rocky launch with Zen 5 on the desktop and I don't think changing the version of Windows would have made much odds there. After all, the comparison between Zen 5 and Zen 4 would still stand. It's just the gap would increase slightly. Possibly AMD has been done dirty by Microsoft, but overall you have to question AMD's marketing. They've taken some knocks during this launch, and I have to say they seem entirely justified.